I'm all excited here. I've gotten my copy of my Advent Preaching Sermon book, you know, from uh, the Preaching Advent Ministry. I'm very happy for my brother Chris and what he has been doing in this wonderful regard. This book will help, you know, to preserve messages. I have preached so many sermons and I can't tell where the manuscripts are right now, but having a book is able to preserve them and able to share them with anyone who comes in contact. Get your copy today as we continue the promulgation of the everlasting gospel. God bless you. Hello everyone, welcome to another sermon prep study by Advent Preaching. And I am excited because one of the things I enjoy so much in my life is sermon preparation. I love studying the Word of God. I love finding something interesting and doing a study based on that. And what I wanted to do is share with you all the opportunity we have today to just talk about Ephesians 2. So... Right here, as you see, this is the brand new sermon book that you can get. And the reason why this is so important, because it has a place where you can store all your sermons and keep them organized. Refer to them in the future and even use them to write a book. So that's why this sermon book is so important for pastors, lay pre preachers, even members. If they want to just get this and take notes while the pastor is preaching. And have the notes for later. This is a perfect gift for your members, for any pastor that you know, and even for the elders. So today, I want us to talk about Ephesians 2. How do you write a sermon on Ephesians 2, 1 to 6? Very popular verse. One of my favorite verse, verses in the Bible. But before we dive into the Word of God, let us pray. Father in heaven, I pray, Lord, that you could just give us the strength and give us the peace so that we could understand your word and understand the blessing you have for us. So it says right here, as for you, you were dead in your trespasses, transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in, he in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. So, this is the verse that we will be focusing on, but specifically, I wrote, but God being rich in mercy, so we have keywords, rich, mercy, because of the great love in which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. So we start seeing the keywords, and this is Ephesians 3, 4, and 5. Now, First thing that I want to do is I want to understand how I'm going to approach this. So you, of course, you want to pray. You want to use the Bible. So first and foremost, it's always about the Bible. This is the preaching text, right? Now we have the word of God as our foundation. But the next step we want to move into is the problem. Of course, introduction is right here because this is how you preach it. But overall, you want to do the problem first. So the problem is you, you're connecting to, I'm going to bring up a graph on the screen right now. And the whole purpose of this is Christ-centered gospel preaching. Christ-centered gospel, gospel preaching. And there's a trajectory, all right? This is a trajectory of how you 
will do this. And first and foremost, we want to use the Bible. Second, we want to use the problem and we want to connect that to the pathos. How does that make you feel? How, what emotions does that bring up the problem? And that's connected to sin and the great controversy. So whenever you look at a Bible verse, you want to say, how does this connect to sin and the great controversy? And the sin part is we were dead in our sins. We were dead in our trespasses. So that's already one of the questions you want to ask now is how does this connect to the problem? How does this connect to sin? Now, the solution is always Jesus. Every Bible verse in the Bible connects to the life, death, resurrection of Jesus Christ and what he is doing for us now. Every single Bible verse. So we want to start to bring our sermons back to the Christ-centered solution. And then the main point, this is the key point of the whole text. If, if there's one thing that you want them to walk away with, you want them to walk away with this point. And from this, when I started talking about uh, the main point, I wrote a, a catchy phrase that I would be repeating. Fill me up, Lord, with praise and thanksgiving. I am alive with Christ. It's by grace we have been saved. Amen. So you want to have that key verse that you're just repeating over and over again. And this is what you're saying. The main point, the key catchy phrase that you're saying throughout the sermon. So when they come back and they study, okay, and they question, what was that sermon about? They still know that key phrase. So that's the main point. You want to have that key phrase and it always points to Jesus. So when you start getting to the problem, the solution, the main point, the application, all of these things uh, point to Jesus. When you get to the conclusion and the appeal, this points to in repeating what you said in a brief statement, the conclusion. So you got the application, you got main point, conclusion. The, this is introducing the sermon. This part is introducing the sermon, introduction. The appeal right here, this is a call for transformation. But when you're calling for a transformation, this is saying surrender into an intimate relationship with Jesus. So we are going through the trajectory of these seven parts. But the purpose is to use the word of God and to proclaim it and to preach it and to herald it so that it encourages surrender. That's what it comes down to. It encourages surrender into an intimate relationship with Christ. And that's the purpose of this outline. The purpose of this outline is direct, straight to the point, using the Bible, how to go from introduction, problem, solution, main point, application, conclusion, appeal. Now, preachers usually do this in some type of way, but this is helping you stay organized so you stay on point and you get right to the point, especially with the main point. There is one point in the sermon that is the main point that people remember. The three, four, five, eight, ten point sermons, you split them up into each individual sermon. Because the ten point sermons, it is very hard for people to remember unless they are writing it down and reviewing it later. But 99% of the time, unless you're talking to somebody that has amazing memory, people are struggling to remember the the points the 10 points so main point one point sermons get straight to the point impactful deep profound and that's how we do it so for this sermon ephesians 2 4 and 5 we want to say but god being rich in mercy we're thinking about that as we're playing the sermon how do we encourage them to be rich in mercy how do we encourage them to give their lives to Christ? How do we encourage them to go into an intimate relation with Jesus? So what we're doing is we're unpacking it and saying, Okay, you were dead. The Lord, help me. I need to be rescued. So it's saying we were dead. We were longing for redemption. We were longing for redemption. But we need to understand that even deeper inside of us that we don't even know that we need to be rescued 
That's because we were dead in our sins. And the biggest problem with sins, as, as much as it presents itself looking so great and amazing, it leaves us empty. It leaves us feeling guilt. It leaves us feeling like we never got enough because sin does not fulfill us. And when we think that we are alive and living and having fun, we are actually dead. And what Paul is saying is, Paul is giving praise and thanksgiving to God in this verse because he realized that he was persecuting the church, but now he is living for Jesus, living for the church, and he's saying, but God. This right here is the gospel. But God. But God being rich in mercy, that's the gospel through the cross of Jesus Christ. Because of the great love which, which he loved us, God loves you. God loves you. That's why he sent his son to die for you. You see, sin does not love you. Sin is there to destroy you. And the wages of sin is what? Is the wages of sin is death. And that's what the enemy wants. The enemy doesn't want you living for Christ. The enemy doesn't want you surrendering your life to God and abiding in God and using your talents and your gifts and your life to honor and glorify Jesus Christ. The enemy doesn't want you walking with God like how Enoch and Noah did and Jesus did. He doesn't want that. The enemy doesn't want you spending time to God, with God like Moses did and being transformed. But what did God do? Rich in mercy and because of his great love for us, he makes us alive together with Christ. And this is where the solution is right there. We need to grab onto this. We need to grab onto that helping hand. We need to be rescued. And this is where we need to repent and surrender to God. This is where Paul is talking about that ray of hope. But God, but God, God's love, it surpasses our guilt. It surpasses our sadness. It's through the cross of Christ that we are saved. Amen. So now we see that our souls are filled with praise and thanksgiving. And one of the greatest things in the world is that abiding relationship we have with Christ. When our souls are filled with praise and thanksgiving, it allows us to walk with God and to look at sin and say, I don't want that for my life anymore. I don't want that in my life. God's grace, God's mercy, God's love and the power of Christ is more powerful than sin. Because Christ is the victory. Amen. And this is why our souls are filled with praise and thanksgiving. So we say, Lord, fill me up, Lord, with praise and thanksgiving. I am alive with Christ. It's by grace we have been saved. Amen. And what does this do for our life? How do we apply this to our everyday life? You see, when we start to realize the experience of the gospel and what Jesus does for us, our souls are filled with praise and thanksgiving and we start to experience the blessings of the Holy Spirit working in our lives. And this is what Paul is talking about. Paul is talking about the fact that he's going to give praise. He's going to give thanksgiving because he realized that the Holy Spirit is actually working in his life. He once was persecuting the church. Now he's working for the church. He's working for God. He's building up the church and he's going out there and blessing people through the power of the Holy Spirit, preaching the gospel. So that's why Paul is praising God for what he done. He said, I know where I used to be, but now I know where I am today. And because of Christ, I know where my future is in the kingdom of heaven. Because that's what God promised me. If I would just believe in the blood of Jesus Christ, I have the gift of eternal life. Amen. So this is what Paul is talking about to the church in Ephesians. He's saying that, yes, we were dead in our trespasses and sins. But because God is rich in his mercy, in his grace, he sent Christ to die for us on the cross. And when we look towards Christ, when Christ is lifted up, he draws all people to himself. Why? Because there's victory, there's freedom, there's redemption in Christ. And he's holding out a hand for us to grab so that we could be redeemed and this is where we have to realize that we wear now these robes of Christ's righteousness because of God's grace 
And this is how we daily walk with God. We daily walk with God by going back to the word, surrendering to God and saying, Lord, abide in me, live in me. I want to do your will. I want to live with you. I want to walk with you, Lord. And we start to realize that the Holy Spirit is drawing us in because while we were yet sinners, God was reconciling the world to himself through Christ. And that's what he did on the cross. So now we start to realize what the Holy Spirit is doing to our life. Because as we read the word of God, our minds start to open up when it comes to understanding. And this is where we start to find joy and peace in an intimate relationship with Jesus. An intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. So, so, so what, is, what is this verse saying? This is, verse is saying we were dead in our trespasses, but it's by his grace we are saved. So we all come to the foot of the cross and we say, Lord, fill me up with praise and thanksgiving. I am alive with Christ. It's by grace we have been saved. Amen. And this is how we experience true peace. So sin used to give us emptiness and guilt. But the righteousness of God through Christ gives us peace for us to experience every single day. Amen? And this is where I want to make an appeal. A call for transformation. That you would say, Lord, I want something new in my life. Lord, I want you to fill me up with your praise. I want you to fill me up with thanksgiving. I want you to fill me up with the understanding that I am alive with Christ. And it's by grace that I have been saved. Amen. And that's how I want to live my life. I want to live my life like Paul. Yes, I'm recognizing what I've been through. I'm recognizing my testimony, but I'm also recognizing my redemption. Amen. I'm recognizing my redemption. I'm recognizing my redemption. Do you want to answer that appeal today? Do you want to recognize your redemption? Do you want your soul to be filled with praise and thanksgiving? If so, join me in prayer right now. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we recognize our redemption in Jesus. We recognize that you saved us from the old life into the new life. To walk now in the spirit, to abide in you. And to accept the gift of eternal life faithfully. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So that's how we preach a sermon on Ephesians 2, 4, and 5. What you do is you put an introduction with a re redemption story, a personal story of how you were rescued. Mine was when I was younger, my finger got stuck in a lock and a janitor, a super of the building, a uh, bu building manager had to come and take my finger out. So that's how I opened up the sermon. But praise God. Thank you for joining us again as we continue through the book of Ephesians. May God continue to bless you. And remember, get your copy of a sermon, your sermon book and every day start working on your sermons. Preaching Jesus until the second coming of Jesus Christ. God bless you all. Thank mm -hmm. you.